This is TOS Television, your digital first pan African news network. I am Abigail Okwade, and this is Africa Now. Many insurgent attacks were carried out over the weekend on the African continent. The government of the Democratic Republic of the Congo late on Sunday declared curfew in Beni City in the northeastern part of the Democratic Republic of Congo after two bomb blasts hit the city. On Sunday morning, a bomb exploded in a local church, injuring at least two people and causing considerable damage. The authorities have not identified the perpetrators. Later on Sunday, on the outskirts of Beni, at least two people were injured by a suicide bomber who was confirmed dead according to police sources. The carrier of the bomb has not yet been identified. 21 Al-Shabaab fighters have been executed in Somalia's semi-autonomous state of Puntland after they were convicted by a military court in Galkayo for carrying out assassinations and bombings over more than a decade. Al-Shabaab controls much of the country's southern and central parts and are said to have raised more cash than the Somali government. This is reported to be the largest number of executions of Al-Shabaab members ever in Portland. Still in Somalia, Islamist Al-Shabaab group on Sunday launched an attack on a military base in Wilsil town in the country's semi-autonomous state of Galmudog, killing at least 30 people. The Al-Qaeda allied Al-Shabaab had been fighting in Somalia for more than a decade to try to topple the country's central government and establish its own rule based on its strict interpretation of Islamic Sharia law. The group attacked the base with two car bombs and fierce fighting that lasted over an hour. Al-Shabaab has claimed responsibility for the attack via a statement on its radio station Al Andalus. Just few weeks after the completion of the Cameroonian Army's operations of neutralizing separatist activities, at least 10 soldiers were killed and the police station was raided on Saturday in different locations in southwest Cameroon. The mission began on May 15 and was led by the 5th Joint Military Region, consisting nearly 300 soldiers. According to the Army's claims, Cameroonians have embraced the separatist ideologies in all areas, making it difficult for them to fight. Some residents are of the opinion that the military operations would not bring peace. Now away from security matters. To help South Africa curb the spread of coronavirus and save lives as it battles a third wave of the pandemic, President Cyril Ramaphosa on Sunday reimposed tighter restrictions. In a televised address to the nation, the president says the worst hit country on the continent is facing a massive resurgence of infection and their health facilities are stretched to the limits. All gatherings were banned except for funerals where numbers will be capped at 50. The nighttime curfew will be starting at 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. As of June 27, South Africa has recorded 1,913,861 confirmed cases of COVID-19, of which 59,778 proved fatal and 1,702,070 resulted in recovery. This is your Digital First Pan Africa News Network, TOS Television. You are watching Africa Now. We move to business after the break. Do stay tuned. Welcome back in business. After the government of South Africa tightened COVID-19 restrictions to cope, with, to cope with the speed and scale of new coronavirus infections, the round weakened early on Monday. At 6.23 GMT, the round traded at 14.1800 against the dollar, 0.37% weaker than its previous close. Government bonds also weakened with the yield on the instrument due in 2030, rising 4.5 basis points to 9.035%. After three days of closed meetings and completing a raft of rapid economic reforms, Sudan's cabinet says government expenditure will be cut and social spending will be increased. The country will cut cost of external official trips by 50%, reduce fuel quotas for government vehicles by 20%, sell all surplus government vehicles and cut embassies budgets by 25%, amongst other measures. The government will expand the registration of a family support project called Tamarat of Fruits to include 3 million families or about 15 million people within two months. 
Now, President Samuel Suluhu Hassan has announced that Tanzania plans to revive a $10 billion stalled Bagmoyo Ports project on the country's eastern coast. In 2013, Tanzania signed a deal in 2013 with a Chinese company to construct the port and a special economic zone that aimed to transform the East African country into a trade and transport hub to rival its neighbors. The Bagmoyo Ports project, which broke ground four years ago, would have been the largest port in East Africa. The Democratic Republic of Congo and Rwanda signed on Saturday three agreements that concern the promotion and protection of investments, taxation and tax evasion between the two countries and a memorandum on gold mining cooperation. The agreements were signed during the visit of Rwandan President Paul Kagame to his Congolese counterpart Felix Shisikedi in Goma on Saturday. According to Felix, it is time to experience the other side of economic fraternal exchanges between the two countries. Now away from business, the Accident Investigation Bureau of Nigeria is to help Sierra Leone provide technical support for the setting up of the country's aircraft Afri Accident Incident Investigation Bureau. This followed the conclusion of a recent two-day fact-finding mission to the Sierra Leone Aircraft Accident Incident Investigation Bureau by the Nigerian Bureau. The team led by Adeni Oni examined the establishment of Sierra Leone's investigation agency, development of legislation, regulations, manuals, and guidance materials. And that is Africa Now. For more updates, to visit our website at www.tostvnetwork.com. Follow us and like our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And remember to subscribe on YouTube. Do stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS Television Network. I am Abigail Okwade. Thanks for watching.